um, Kelly and Tammy Rundle. Um, we're going to talk to them in a minute. But, man, uh, if you watch PBS, and you, you've probably seen a lot of their stuff, and I'm a PBS big-time fan, you know. That's what introduced me to Monty Python and Tom Baker's Doctor Who and, right. and Are You Being Served and, you know, later in life, uh, Austin City Limits and Nova and the kind of work you guys do. Um, if you thinking, well, who? Well, I know you've seen some of their stuff. Lost Nation, the Iowa Parts 1, 2, and 3. Um, Any Kids Anywhere. Movie Star, The Secret Life of Gene Seberg. Man, that one was... Hoo-hoo. Letters from Home to Hero Street. That was just on on PBS, and that one was fantastic. Especially, I know some of the families that are involved, and that was just great. Uh, the Barn Raisers, which is a big one. River to River, The Forgotten Highway Six, and the one we're going to talk about probably quite a bit is going to be Sons and Daughters of Thunder, that is making its world premiere coming up uh, in two weeks at uh, the uh, uh, the Putnam Theater right here in the Quad City. So. Welcome, both of you, Tammy and Kelly Rundle, to uh, to our little abode here at WQUD. We're great to have you guys here with us. We're happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, there we go. Both talking and, yeah. oh, what the soft voice. I like that. <laughs> it's like it's like this into NPR. Okay. <laughs> So let's start off with. <laughs> I had someone at a trade show tell me I should be a therapist. Yeah, there you <laughs> I, I didn't t- really take it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends on what type. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, next one's going to be mom. Yes. Okay. So, so, so let's start off with how'd you guys meet? I mean, what, did, what, what brought you together? Film or. or well, no, we, uh, Tammy was a friend of my sister's, uh, although I, I hadn't met her. So I think they knew each other for a while before we actually met. And uh, then we did meet and um, we dated for about a year. Uh, we were engaged for a year. I actually proposed two weeks after we met. Wow. Um, but uh, one of the first things we did was make a film together. She was the first girl I ever met who had already made some films with her father's eight millimeter camera. And I was using my dad's Super 8 camera, so we both had been kind of doing that even before we met. Both of you were making movies. I guess so. Yes, and you can tell how old we are because we were not shooting on video. We were shooting on film. Yeah, we we are getting older by the minute. (laughs) When I started doing radio and cutting commercials, I was still using tape and a razor blade. I did that, too. So, so, hey, hey, hey. We're at the right place. Vintage radio, that's where we are. That's how far I go back. Um, So did you work together before you were married, or you got married and then did your first stuff together, or...? Uh, We did not do any production together um, until, uh, you know, we we finished uh, college together uh, after we were married, actually, and we did work on a a project together during school. And then when we graduated, I was working, uh, this was in the Kansas City area, and so I was working doing local production work there uh, for about three years, kind of learning my trade. Yeah. And then um, had an opportunity to move to Los Angeles, and uh, we we did that and spent 18 good years out there. I was going to head that way after this one. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) education, what's the back? I I take it you both majored in film? No. Um. (laughs) Don't say, like, you know, Sanskrit literature or something like that, because then you're really going to... Man, nailed nailed it. Oh, man. I I, I majored in English with an emphasis in writing. But that's fine. No, no, no. That's that's fine. You know, I mean, just not... I majored in, you know... Yes. And now I'm making films. Oh, man. Okay. Right. And he... Oh, well, communication arts. So radio, TV, film, journalism degree. Yeah. Yeah. We, We did not i mean when we were going to school we both had separate ambitions whoops all right whoa get a call on that one no we won't (laughs) no we won't because i shut the phone off yeah no it's okay beat it up sorry but um i didn't have any plans whatsoever to work with him at all i thought that we would pursue (laughs) separate careers i'll marry you but we're not gonna work together this is true because i knew a married couple Mm -hmm. who we're both working in video production, and when they work together, they just fought like dogs and cats. And I yeah. thought, well, I don't want that. I'd rather have a happy marriage. Yeah. So for a long time, we kind of avoided that, I think, in a way. But um, in L.A., I eventually got a job with Columbia Pictures, and I spent seven years with them. And 
uh, two or three years into that gig, which was really an amazing experience to be on a major studio lot oh, and yeah. just to be around that. Um, but I wasn't doing anything creative there. I was in the international uh, distribution and advertising publicity department. So we were distributing Columbia and TriStar product to 60 countries around the world. Oh, boy. I and know somebody that used to do that in music. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> but, but not a creative job. And uh, two or three years in, I realized, well, you know, at the end of the day, uh, maybe only two or three of the movies that we produced there every year were movies that I th was really proud to be associated with. Yeah, it. yeah. So we did start talking what, what about time producing. What are we talking uh, that would have been between uh, roughly 90 and 97. Um, so, like, they think of all the great films that came out. Well, <laughs> let's see, Dances with Wolves came out then. Not from the, not from Sony though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Men in Black was one of the big ones. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula was done while I was there, and Hook. Steven Spielberg's Hook. Uh, yep. No, that and was a great one. <laughs> and where were you during this? Oh, I was working for Los Angeles Magazine. So I was there for practically the full run that we were in Los Angeles, uh, working in advertising. And uh, uh, and that worked out. Yeah. Slapping the sale. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. We, oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I, 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 if someone can put a deal or wants to work on something, then we can sit down and not close or whatever. But, man, to pick up a phone and cold call. Yeah. I, I mean, I did it for you. I hate cold call. God. I hate <laughs> you well, and me both. Well, I'm in a position now. I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> yes. All this stuff, in a way, helped us deal with kind of the business side of, oh, absolutely. of what we do. <laughs> absolutely. So we, we behave very much like the major studio, but in a very tiny way. But we, you know, applied those things we learned that worked well for them to what we do. Okay, so then the question is, L.A. to the Midwest. Now, it sounds like you went to school in the Midwest, or at least Kansas. That Kansas was, City, That's yes. where you went to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're out in L.A., and, and I, I spent all of the 80s in, in San Diego, so oh, I, I, I yeah. have a, a point of reference of living yes. out there. Yeah. Um, but I was working in construction, and construction was drying up, so I have mm -hmm. a good, you know, the business you were in hasn't really so, dried up over the right. years. So the <laughs> truth is we had to come back to the Midwest <laughs> to make movies. Ah. Well, we, we loved Los Angeles. We were out there 18 years and loved it. And, and I spent all the 80s in San Diego, and there's and there's a, I can list a, a ton of things, you know, 24-hour right. Mexican restaurants. Right. You know, <laughs> so 3 o'clock in the morning, I need exactly. a carne asada burrito. Oh, you know, man, I mean, no so kidding. No kidding. So there are no. things, and, you know, or, or you know, on New Year's Day, you go swimming in the ocean, yeah. and 45 minutes later, you could be playing in the snow. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> that's yeah, true. that's right. You know, that's and, very true. And, and, and yeah. that was kind of cool, but then there was a lot of things of yes. California living, especially in the 80s, rolling into the early 90s. Yeah. Was, yeah. No, it was. But no. we started our first film project in Los Angeles, <laughs> actually, and um, uh, in, Velisca. In, yeah, that's the one you didn't mention. Was our first. Oh, film. I'm sorry, Velisca. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Velisca, living with a mystery. Uh, that's the story of Iowa's worst mass homicide. Um, we looked at the crime and how that crime distorted that small community over a number of decades. Mm -hmm. So that film we started shooting in the fall of 1993, and then it was a long, long journey to completion. <laughs> you know, earlier today we were at the State Historical Building in Des Moines showing the barn raisers. Um, it's Iowa History Month, uh, going to be Iowa History Month in, in the state. That's going to be declared, I think, on Tuesday. <laughs> the governor will sign a proclamation, but it was part of that. And I was mentioning uh, as we introduced the film that that's where we premiered Velisca, Living with a Mystery, and that was in 2004. And we had about 1,200 people who saw the film that first weekend there in Des Moines. Cool. Yeah. But we produced that in Los Angeles. And, of course, that's an Iowa story. And um, we just couldn't stop this drive to make stories about the Midwest and Iowa, well, and that, Iowa and, stories. And, and that kind of lead me to why documentaries? Yeah. Yeah, we were kind of chatting about that as we were driving back from Des Moines because we, we knew you wanted to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, I, it, it just, I figured at least one of you had some kind of film background and it's on, mm -hmm. and you're LA and I, yeah. you know, and you're in, mm -hmm. you know, everybody in La La Land, you know, yeah. you make movies. And, right, and it, right. But you've chosen 
everything that you've done, it looks like, has been right. documentary, which is not, I mean, I'm a big doc. I, I watch, yeah. you know, documentaries on Netflix, everybody, Netflix mm -hmm. and chill, you know, let's find a series. No, 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 man, they've got this one and this one. <laughs> I can sit yeah. watch documentaries all weekend. <laughs> right. So, you know. right. Well, that was the kind of work I had been doing in the Kansas City area. This was more short form, but it was documentary style work. And uh, I, I think maybe... Although, you know, as you know, we've done a narrative feature now yeah. uh, that we're in the final stages of. But I think then we thought it, it just was a little too much to contemplate or to handle. I mean, had we written a script with two people in an empty room or something, that might have been doable. <laughs> Waiting for Godot. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so it, maybe it was a continuation of that. But I know that when we we developed three different topics, you know, we looked into doing three different things, decided on the Velisca story, and then... When that was completed and over, then we began working fairly quickly on the first uh, part of Lost Nation, the Iowa. So that film was shot uh, when we moved back here, which was in 07. And then the first thing we did when we hit the ground was to finish that one and premiere it uh, in the fall of 2007. Wow, didn't waste no time. No. No, and, and so our films have not taken a decade to complete. Um, except for maybe Sons and Daughters of Thunder altogether <laughs> right. from the time we first, you know, met about it and, and, you know, and until and now. Yeah, but this, this, I, and we're, and we're going to get to really talking about that one here in a little bit. Sure. But, but it's much larger scale than most anything you've tried to attempt. Now, I know yeah. you, you co-produced or, or was involved in like a, um, a, a Letters from Hero Street and that, but, but this is much more expansive, I mean, actor-wise right. and story-wise and, you know, everything, location-wise, yes. yes. than, than it seems like anything else that, that you've tried. So how do you choose? I mean, how do you choose your stories? I mean, what, you, you see something in the paper, you find a book, you flip a coin. I mean, you know, how, how do you? Well, with Velisca, um, we saw uh, a, the historian, the one who'd done most of the research and the work, uh, Ed Epperly, we saw him on television here in the Quad Cities, and we thought, wow, what a fascinating story. And um, we kind of filed that away, and it was several years before we pulled that out and, and decided we're going to try this. We thought it was a sensational enough story that that would be a good one to launch as a first documentary project. And it was. It opened so many doors, and uh, we ended up distributing, self-distributing that from Los Angeles. Um, it was like a one-year run, and it was showing in theaters, and, and it qualified for the Academy Award competition in the documentary category. That was kind of fun for a first documentary yeah. project. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like setting the bar, you yeah. know. Oh, wow, well, this was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Just qualified, though. Yeah. yeah. Just but, had a dog in the fight. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. I, but, 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 you know, yeah, here's the first time out. We've got the, well, yeah. this will be so, easy. We're going to be turning these things out. Uh, like, well, the, the yeah. story, it's really a great story. It's still, I still say it's one of the best stories I've ever heard, uh, and it reads like like bad fiction, really. Yeah. So we didn't have to do anything. It didn't want to do anything to sensationalize it. It is on its face a sensational uh, and strange uh, story. So it was a good way to start. And um, so now one, you gotta... one thing has led to another, and I sometimes I say, well, the topics have chosen us um, because it seems like, uh, well, someone who saw the Velisca film suggested the Iowa as a topic. Uh, someone who saw the Iowa film suggested one-room schools as a topic for country school, one-room, right. one-nation. So I don't know. It just seems like Somebody we're, on a train, we're on some kind of a train. We beards. Can't, can't get there off you go. <laughs> the phenomena of beards. And, <laughs> and if you need a shaggy guy in the background, I'm there. But yeah, there. Right. the phenomena of beards. That's yes. the, I was sitting here thinking, man, i got to come up with an idea for him. So there it is. <laughs> so I, I've had more people in the last year, like, or a couple of years, I don't know. Wow, what a great beard. My wife just looks at me, and why do they say that? I don't know. <laughs> it's grown or, quite a bit well, from the last from, time. Yes, you say, yeah, yeah. Or, or <laughs> wow, how long did it take to grow that? Uh, it's still growing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it is a good beard. <laughs> it's, it's still growing. Um, so we talked about junior subjects. So 
it, it's it's you sit and discuss, or or you said somebody comes and tells you. But I mean, is there times when, when Kelly, will say, oh, I got an idea or something, or you'll say, Well, I got an idea, and you talk about it, and then it's like, No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. do, you, do you devil's advocate against each other or not? I got not against, I guess, but no. But you, you know, there has to be a way. And now you're kind of saying she's got a smile, saying, Oh, and you're well, bobbing and her head. <laughs> if we were on TV, you man, you're. <laughs> you know, it's it all comes down to funding, you know, and even sure. if you've got a great idea and you have no way to. Um, fund it. It's just that it just stays an idea, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some, exactly some things right. you can make without maybe without a budget if you're just kind of doing it in your spare time or whatever. But we have to kind of keep things rolling financially since we do this full time. So yeah, we have to. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. If we want to make it. We want to figure out how we can get it to an audience and and generate revenue. And we're focused on historical topics. That's yeah. what our interest is. Mm -hmm. And if it, if anybody would have said to me when I was you know in high school that I was going to end up making historical documentaries, I would have said, "You are nuts." Yeah. No, and even in Forget college, no, I'm, not, I'm going to yeah. be a writer. <laughs> yes. I'm going to win the Pulitzer. What are you talking about? Well, that's when she started getting interested in history because she was taking a lot of history courses. Yeah. And uh, I did, <laughs> I did make a short film, or made a film. You're gonna uh, do this on the radio in junior high school, <laughs> in junior high school on the Civil War. And uh, the teacher was so impressed that she had every class come through and watch it. The principal, however, was not amused. Um, <laughs> there was a bit of humor in it, and he did not find it funny. Uh, so I think he thought we were just a couple of. Uh, that way, I, I made it with two friends, Terry Redmond and Daryl Harmoning. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's where it all started for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, but you can't leave that hang. Okay. Why did the principal not like it? You can't just, man. You, oh, no, yeah. I you're just trying to, to cliffhang us here. No, I, you know, he just didn't. <laughs> it just was maybe irreverent or something. We had a, there was a scene. Okay, this is what it was. It's coming back to me now. <laughs> there was a scene uh, that we did with a firing squad, um, but we used snowballs instead of uh, well, bullets, bullets, course, bullets and yeah. guns, yeah. <laughs> well, so I don't know. That's, yeah. that's Monty python yes, You know, I mean, yes. how can he? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Man. I don't yeah. think he got it. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. But. Um, uh, so what's your average research? Like when you when, when you finally get an idea or someone brings you an idea, um, do you do like just a, a scan research? Oh, man, this might work. Or, or do you dive into it hard to see if it's something that you really want to to get involved with? I mean, just, you know, I, yeah, I'm sure once you decide, there's mm -hmm. hours upon hours upon hours right. of research done. But, but just when, you, when the idea comes, how much do you research it to decide what's, what's good and what's not? Well, we call that development, and it's... it's <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You, it's got well, a name. Yeah, it oh. does have a name, and you, you do it to the extent of finding out if the, it'll work. You think it'll work. And uh, we were talking about that a little bit, too, on, on the way here, that uh, we've been lucky to uh, find people, for exa example, on each film, at least one person, who's, who's very much an expert and that we can kind of start with, uh, and then we add other elements uh, to the project, and... So we have access to, um, we get to hang around with a lot of people who are way smarter than we are, which is awesome. Uh, we learn- That's why I do radio. <laughs> <laughs> we learn a lot on each project. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I said to the audience today in Des Moines, I said, there's a little family that forms, a little community around each film. And then even though the film ends and we move on to a different film, we get to keep those friends, you know, and we keep in touch. So when we do this premiere in Davenport, there'll be people there from the Velisca film and the Iowa film and the Country School film <laughs> and Letters Home to Hero Street. So it's just a nice big uh, family. It's we've like acquired. a band. You're building a following. You yeah. know? Oh, I like this song and I like this song. Oh, yeah. And, well, hey, we're playing down the streets. Everybody come on in. You know, I, 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 I can relate. I understand how, how, yeah. how that goes. Um, uh, now, I did notice that I, I'm going to talk about runtime. Mm -hmm. How do you decide? I mean, because some documentaries, I watch documentaries that are, you know, man, I got to take a break in the middle of it. And, mm -hmm. and then some of them, it's like, boy, I really wish they'd added even another five minutes to it to, to 
close this one or, yeah. or you know, unless it's one that's going to continue on. You know, it's just part one. You know, I mean, all, all the stuff that, that uh, Ken Burns does. I mean, mm -hmm. this one's leading to this one and leading to this one and leading to this one. Mm -hmm. um, so what makes, is it is it probably subject matter or do you go in saying, okay, I want to do a 60 minute or I want to do a 30 or I want to do an, a 90 or... Well, our target or uh, where most of our stuff is shown is on PBS. Mm -hmm. So um, usually we do, uh, it'll be either a 26, 40, 26 minutes and 40 second mm -hmm. uh, slot, or it'll be a 56 Six minute. minute. Yeah, yep. okay. 40. So um, depending on what kind of funding we get, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of dictates a lot of the time how long that project or how long that particular film project is going to be. If it's a really an extensive topic, though, that deserves much more time, we'll even go beyond the hour. It just depends on how, compl how complex the story is and if we can, you know, sustain interest in the content. Well, I mean, like, uh, let's, uh, like Lost Nation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the Iowa, which right. kind of explained the, 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 the story of it, and then I can go mm -hmm. from there. Well, the state of Iowa is named after uh, a Native American tribe, and um, a lot of people in Iowa don't know that. <laughs> but um, and, and we didn't know that. Uh, I may have a, an excuse. I grew up in Illinois, Tammy in Waterloo, Iowa, so clearly she should have— Oh, you're to blame. There you go. She yeah. should have learned this in school, but the, it's still not something that's really taught in school. But mm -mm. the topic was introduced to us, and we looked into it a little bit to see what was what the story was all about. And— right away realized, well, this is a great uh, Iowa story. It's a great Midwestern story. This is a great American story. Uh, historical. I mean, yeah, you're hitting you all know. of your, so <laughs> all of your it points. Was, yeah, it was something that we thought, uh, we're always looking for a topic that maybe has a local or regional awareness or following, but deserves a, a larger audience. And lots of great Midwestern stories just go untold because I think people are as you know, you're, uh, people kind of retell the same stories over and over again. Went to, we went to a trade show one time in Los Angeles, and I, I told Tammy, I said, all that's here are documentaries about pyramids, sinking ships, and Nazis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, yeah. that covered about 90% <laughs> of what was there. History channels made a so, living off mm -hmm. of Nazis. I'm telling it's you. It's not that you know those things aren't important as well, but gosh, there's a lot of other things that are equally mm -hmm. important. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the little niche, I guess, that we've tried to carve out. So with that one, did you go in knowing you were going to start doing in parts or part one, part two, or it was just so massive or did, just, or did one lead, you did one and said, well, you now we got to, you know, we saw during one, you got an idea, oh, here's two, and during that one you saw, or did you go in knowing you were going to do? Well, I'll, I'll let you answer that, but before we even get into that, to that, um, doing this particular film about the Iowa people was probably one of the most influential experiences of our lives. It was, uh, these Native Americans were so open to us, which they didn't have to be. You know, they've been through a lot, and um, they were just willing to talk with us, share their stories, uh, you know, some of them very emotional and very powerful, and uh, it's been a life-changing experience for us. So I'll set it up that way. I think we thought that we would just do one film. That was the plan, and uh, and yet the story was was uh, uh, was large. So the first film we had to kind of focus on a particular period. So we focused on a period between uh, contact uh, with Europeans, which was around 1700, through. Um, about 1836, which was uh, removal from the state uh, to a reservation in Kansas, Nebraska. So uh, then we had some other um, things at the end that kind of brought the story up to date, but we couldn't go into detail on those. So later we had an opportunity to, to do more. Uh, we talked with uh, both of the Iowa tribes about the possibility of doing uh, two sequels simultaneously. So we did the Back to the Future, produced two <laughs> sequels at the same time, uh, that model, and um, they were they were very much in favor of it. Uh, both Native and non-Native Native people at our screenings of of the first film asked, "Well, you know, then what happened? You know, what's the yeah, rest I of mean, the story?" Yeah, that, that I've come across. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so the second film uh, picks up uh, with that period, 1830 through uh, 1878 or so. 
That's when the tribe split into two groups. One group went to Oklahoma. So then the third film in the series uh, is basically 1878 into the 1970s, uh, kind of the American Indian movement period. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I mean, so, and they all, so you didn't consider doing, I mean, with that subject, that wasn't the one that made you say, well, let's make a son and daughters. Let's make a, a big movie. No. No. <laughs> no. Still, still too soon? Yes. Well, you mentioned yeah. Letters Home to Heroes, and that one was a little different for us because the funding came for that rather suddenly from the Illinois Arts Council. They contacted WQPT and said, we have some grant money that's been returned. We've enjoyed working with WQPT in the past, and the results have been good. We would like to give you this money if you have an idea for a visually creative documentary. Well, they, they didn't have uh, an idea for that right off the top of their head, but they were aware that we were working on the Hero Street story, and they knew this wasn't enough money for the, you know, to tell the story of all eight, but they wondered, well, is there part of the story we could tell? And then we had to turn this idea around within about 24 hours. That was the other thing. Well, the first thing that popped into my head was that we had looked at some of the letters that the men had sent home to their families. And because we don't write letters anymore or send them, yeah. the envelopes are interesting. Uh, you know, the postmarks, uh, the stamps are, are interesting. They're handwritten in cursive, of course, and uh, sometimes on base stationery. That's interesting. So I thought, you know, visually, there's something to work with. Uh, that's something we don't see a lot anymore, and it would be interesting to watch and to, to see on screen. So we thought, well, what if we tell a story um, through letters? And that was kind of the pitch we gave. Now, when we began to really drill down on what were the what letters did we have access to, it turned out that at least from one of the heroes, uh, Frank Sandoval, we had a full story. So he began writing letters when he was inducted. Yep. And then over a two-year period, uh, his, his entire experience, and then his last letter was maybe just a month before he was killed in combat. So with Frank, we had a full uh, account uh, to work with. But it also gave us an opportunity to try reenactments. Yep. So we were using um, actors to portray these true, you know, these real people. These real people, yeah. And uh, that's how we kind of started to dabble into and so that working was the, with actors. That was the first time you guys ever, of any of that was the first time you actually tried yeah. that in one of your documentaries yeah, yeah we, we did a little with Velisca, but it wasn't very I mean, it was limited just limited what i would call to, limited reenactment yeah so. to the extent of i mean what you what you, you know not only send there but 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 what you do with the letters so did you have i mean just like with <clears throat> excuse me sons and daughters you directed it you you know wrote it directed it did the mm -hmm. whole thing and set it on it was a co-production with uh, wqpt so we had we had a team and uh, usually it's just Kelly and I working on our documentaries with, with some assistance from, you know, other people here right. and there. But I would say that was the project that really kind of, you know, so, it, hey, it, was, can, it was a baptism we, by we, fire for us to kind of learn what it was going to be like to work, you know, uh, have other people on board working with us. And it was wonderful. So you weren't no daunting i mean no 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 lying awake at night saying can we really do this um, you just went in and it was you just go <laughs> yeah <laughs> fools fools go where angels fear to tread yes and, they do yes, um, yes, yes, yes. We're, we're known for that <laughs> sort of thing so yeah if the, if the path is trodden down it's not yours <laughs> you know it was with that project in particular it just everything just fell together on it and we we ended up working with great people on camera and behind the camera mm -hmm. Um, the concept worked, and um, so I mean the story. You know, I know it's cliche, but yeah. it wrote itself. It was, yes. yeah. It was, I mean, in, in, in this yeah. case, literally. Yes. You know, you got letters, but I mean, right. it's, it's not something you had to. You know, this character is. I mean, you, you had everything you wanted, yeah. which kind of jumps me ahead because uh, you're now working where that's going to become. Do I say a series? It's going to be a, a series of stories? Hero, Hero Street? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. We're working on a series. Yeah, originally it was a feature-length film that would tell the story of all eight. We just could not raise money for that. Um, and the success uh, of Letters Home to Hero Street, it did. Re I think that was our second Emmy nomination. Um, somehow packaging it as short films has been a better approach. So we have one... Uh, that will be finishing, uh, the it'll be the first in the series, Riding the Rails to Hero Street. So that'll tell the story of how the families came 
uh, to this country around the time of the First World War. And then um, we're working on another uh, individual hero, William Sandoval. Uh, he has a very interesting story that eventually leads him to be involved in what's still the largest air assault in the history of the world, um, uh, a uh, military operation called Operation Market Garden yeah. uh, that took place in uh, Holland. Yep, very, very. Um, so he, he had a very interesting um, uh, story because of his connection to that very famous uh, battle. That call, that was E Company. Okay. Oh, and then there was a Hollywood movie made about it called A Bridge Too Far. A Bridge Too Far, yeah. Most people mm -hmm. have seen that. It's quite good. Right. Um, so let's talk about, since now, casting. Because mm -hmm. um, now you've stepped from one point to where you, you know, where, where you were just doing documentary, and now you're casting people. So, like for uh, um, um, Letter from Hero Street, you guys did the casting? We worked with Laura Adams from WQPT, and uh, we did auditions. We had um, people come in and audition for, we only had three, three right, yeah, well, four yeah. parts. And so that was kind of, uh, that was doable. <laughs> and um, and we had uh, several people that came in and auditioned, and that um, is how we kind of got our feet wet with working Ooh. With, casting with casting yeah. <laughs> yeah because yeah the next one got a little, and little it's, more it's hard because you get a lot of really good people in <laughs> and, and you only have so many parts and, oh, oh can we yeah. can we write in yeah. but it probably helps when you're doing the, the new series now i don't know if you're going to do what i call it live action <laughs> i mm -hmm. mean you're going to do you know actual parts to that one too what's the technical term i'm trying to say here well here's what we're doing with the series uh we're going to take each story individually and uh, for example, riding the rails to Hero Street is going to be more of a, just a conventional documentary. Mm -hmm. um, but others may include some reenactments. Others we may do in, in different ways. We're exploring uh, different ways of telling each story, trying to, trying to um, tailor the method or the approach uh, as, to the best way to tell that story. Okay. Uh, and so production-wise, you... Since you're doing everything locally, you use the, you're using a lot of the same people for your for your team. Oh, or do you? Yes, I mean, I like your, like your sound guys or your lighting guys, or you do that all on your own. I mean, I don't know how gorilla you guys are. The, 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 I'm, the, right now, I got the director's hat on. You turn it around, and now I'm the gaffer, and I turn it around, and now I'm. Well, for for our documentaries, yeah, that's very yeah, much the yeah, way it yeah. is. <laughs> but um, I would say we really like working with these really awesome talented people and we do kind of stick with people that we trust and we can count on and we know what they can do and we know what their talents are and, so and that's, that's the best way yeah, yeah. And there's a shorthand that develops so that mm -hmm. they kind of can read your mind and vice versa so that, yeah, hel that helps so, yeah <laughs> right yeah, when you say shouldn't we no weren't you thinking of this yeah that's <laughs> what I, yeah oh yeah that's what it was yeah. exactly right so let's talk a little bit about the new one and only because and and you know all transparency uh, i was allowed to cross something <laughs> off of a bucket list i had mm -hmm. actually two things um one was to someday be in a movie and 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 i don't even care if i'm on the cutting room floor it don't matter i got to wear a really cool costume twice i got to be in this really cool old building that was really and then i got to be outside for a really long night up in sterling <laughs> and wasn't that fun yeah yeah i mean it was, it was, it was for someone that went involved it was interesting, you know, but after about the, the, the I don't know, 10th or 11th time that they come walking through us, I'm like, right. man, they, you know, they've got to have a good take by now. <laughs> but I don't know what I'm looking at, so, you know, it was cool. No, it was, yeah. It, it, and that's not true. There were only nine takes. Oh, okay. There, there. Okay. You are exaggerating. See, I am. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> there you go. But but it was really interesting, it was, and, and, and it was a really cool thing to do. Um so let's tell a little story. Uh, give us exactly what, because it is it is such. Even when I first heard about it going on, because I've got kind of a personal connection. Um, when I first heard about it going on, I wow, man, what is this? So I started. I'm a big history buff, so I started looking into a few things, and some, and then it just became wow, this is like way cool. I didn't even realize, you know, I wrote a dirty, and nasty letter to my grade school. Why didn't you teach us this? You know, um, <laughs> because it's something that should have been taught about sixth or seventh grade. You should have been learning all of that. I am so glad you did all that research. Well, I, because it, it seemed interesting, you know. 
Well, and, and then because I said, oh, yeah, Giannis, who's, you know, I, he's Giannis. Yeah. But we've known each other for so many years, and he's, well, he's playing what part? Oh, so let me <laughs> see what this is. Oh, because, I mean, I just kind of, we've known each other since high school, oh. so I just kind of follow whatever he does. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit exactly what it is about. I should say where, it's, where, we, where we found out about it. Because we didn't know anything about yeah. the subject either. And it's kind of weird because there's no real connection here. But someone saw our Iowa film, and they knew about a play that had been written by a, a Waverly, Iowa woman. She wrote it in the 70s uh, while, while she and her husband were living in Oregon. And the play was produced to good notices um, a couple of times in Eugene, Oregon, I think, and, and then uh, never performed again, so far as we know. But anyway, he knew about the play. And for some reason, he thought, well, that would make a good movie <laughs> and put us together so, with this woman. So, so let me tell the documentary makers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. It's like, I what are we going to do with this? It was a little bit of a non sequitur, <laughs> but uh, certainly a, a really interesting part of American history that I knew nothing about. But the gist of it is that uh, in 1834 in Cincinnati, Ohio, the first public debates regarding the abolition of slavery took place at a seminary. They were organized by... Uh, a man named Theodore Weld, one of the architects of the abolitionist movement, and he was then a student, and many of the most of the participants were students. Um, and what's interesting about that, that's interesting enough, I guess, uh, uh, and momentous enough, but the seminary, the man in charge of the seminary was a man named Lyman Beecher. And Lyman had a daughter named Harriet Beecher, who later became a very famous, well, pro at in her moment, she was maybe the most famous woman in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a writer, woman, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so this was one of the first things that she witnessed in Cincinnati. Uh, while, while she lived in Cincinnati, which was, I don't know, 20 years or so, uh, all of those things that she experienced and, and saw there, uh, she later distilled into the book Uncle Tom's Cabin. And uh, so a lot of that started with these, these public debates, which it's hard to imagine now. But in that, uh, in Cincinnati, this is right across from um, Kentucky. Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> right, right across the Ohio River. And there were slaves moving across that river every night uh, into Trying the Underground escape. Railroad. Mm -hmm. So, um, the idea of having public discussions about it, uh, people may not like slavery, but talking about it in that way was really oh, yeah. frowned upon. Mm -hmm. So, the reaction to 18 nights of debates in Cincinnati by the students was something close to a riot. Uh, close to violence happening in town. That's the kind of reaction that it engendered. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I uh, when, when we, uh, when we filmed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, uh, uh, when I was extra in the, in the, uh, when we did the Frederick Douglass scene, yeah. I was able to meet yeah. her and her husband, and man, they just, I, I, while we were still, you know, doing that Hollywood thing, setting up lights and sound and all that. I was able to chat with him for a little bit, and it was really interesting, you know, to talk to. And her enthusiasm, he seemed enthusiastic enough, but he seemed like a guy that had heard her talk about it. I don't want to say ad nauseum, but enough mm -hmm. that he didn't really <laughs> have to listen to every single word. We've been there. Don't give me that look. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you a secret. I'll tell you a secret about that, though. Um, Kent was the, he, he uh, was a producer on the project, so... Uh, and his interest really was in having his wife's work recognized in some way. Um, his wife it, is uh, Erlene Hawley. I yeah, don't think yeah. we mentioned oh, no, her. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. And, and uh, she's the playwright, and mm -hmm. she had assistance by Curtis Heater on the play. Right. But, yeah. but, but that was his goal. He really wanted uh, that work to be recognized, and uh, he was such a huge help to us. And uh, unfortunately, he's passed away, and uh, we're going to greatly miss his, his presence as we bring this to a close so, but i i might have misread it because he i mean he wasn't looking off anywhere but yeah. uh, she was talking about the things i mean you know she yes. was, she was yeah. very ex excited but but and it was also a well let me tell you right this yes. is young man no yeah. no this is oh okay you know you, you, and 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 you wanted to listen to her it was you know when she was telling a story you you right. wanted to hear what she had yep. to say. It was right. really, really neat. Just the, the few minutes I was able to, to talk with her. Right. So this was your biggest show to ever have to cast. Yes, I would say if we were going to make a movie, you did. not a documentary, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. If we were going to have make a choice for a movie to do, this is the right 
movie to do because it's a true story and it really is you know having i think the documentary background has helped us tremendously with this project and well yeah because you you wouldn't get sidetracked with hollywoodisms because you're remaining true to the text and you're remaining true to the story as documentarians as opposed to movie makers right well and i don't want to burst that bubble entirely but (laughs) no no go ahead burst away all right here it comes uh but you know it is a fictional telling of of a true story right so uh there have you know this has gone through two creative lenses now and the first one was the playwright's lens um i'm still amazed at all of the the factual content that she incorporated into that play there were things that i thought were uh her own uh creative ideas that turn out to have a basis in in the truth that we've discovered along the way. So I uh, continue to be amazed that she did this old school, uh, hardcore research in the 70s and came up with all of these things. She didn't know, however, that the house where a lot of the story takes place still existed. And well, that's so what I, yeah, I was going to head there a little bit. Mm-hmm. Excited to hear about that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, and then of course the second creative lens was uh, they wanted us to, that's how we got involved initially, they wanted us to adapt that play to a screenplay, and then we would decide later what to do with it, if anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it went through our creative lens, and we made some changes to uh, the story. Uh, one of the major ones, really, was that uh, Catherine Beecher, Harriet's sister, was really the major figure in the play. So we thought, well, Catherine was a very accomplished woman, and so on, but nobody knows Catherine they know Harriet so we brought brought Harriet up in the narrative and brought Catherine down a bit (laughs) (laughs) right but we had um our our, we had a wonderful casting director assigned to the project Kimberly Kurtenbach and she knows a lot of people and uh (laughs) so I mean I didn't mean to interrupt but you said assigned you guys hired her or or you right. just uh, yes okay. we, hi- we well, you set a sign so it's like I, I was, we oh, hired her yes sure you, you we hired her, her. we've worked okay. with kim on uh, a couple projects now and she's just fabulous and um she put us in touch with i mean we had some people that we had already you know planned on having involved our frederick douglas yeah. was a friend from los angeles an actor mark Wynn, and he's you know so we already had him lined up but she put us in touch with a lot of wonderful actors um in the area in chicago uh we auditioned some people from los angeles too and you know it's been just a when i think back it was we really have a perfect group well you know perfect group of people that's true even our extras i mean you were awesome (laughs) you were oh i held that lantern at the perfect height (laughs) i know i know not everyone can do that no 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 i I realize that it's a gift and you didn't start your beard on fire no 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 well you know we had to keep her trimmed up i might have before that but you never can tell (laughs) um but yeah i mean i know you used a whole lot of local talent not only actors and actresses but uh, a lot of your crew i recognize some of the, when I just a, a couple times I was there some of the people that I recognized that were local talent I mean so is that important to you guys to when 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 you're doing something to also find local I mean some of the parts you said you know you you recruited here and there but do you is, is it was it important for you to use a local flavor or it was I don't care if the whole cast comes from Los Angeles no. Although that, that, that would have busted your we budget. Had, we had a time. budget, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Budget plays a role. and um, So John was a compromise. I can tell him. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you know, that actually casting the, the leads, uh, casting Harriet and Theodore Weld and Lyman Beecher, those were the hardest uh, ones. And it, it took um, – Janos actually uh, wasn't able to come to kind of the first one or two um, auditions and then – uh, we were still looking, really, and then he happened to be available, and he came in, and uh, we're like, wow, okay, yeah, he's he, the one. He was the guy. Yeah. yeah. So, and then Harriet and and Theodore parts too were kind of late in the casting process. Um, With Tom so we, Taylor as Theodore, yeah. and uh, Jessica Taylor, they're married now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and uh, <laughs> and they were just. And aren't they expecting? Perfect. Am I wrong? They have a daughter they, now. Yeah, yes. Daughter. Yes. Daughter. Yes. Uh-huh. So, yeah, no, it, it's been great to have local people uh, involved. And um, 
Well, I mean, and, and they and these are talented folks. You'll see uh, in, in the film. They oh just yeah, a, well I mean you, a great you, job. you got Kristen Tapp's guy. I mean you you know ran the rock on the, the, the little theater for so long. And, yeah. I mean there's a lot of people that I saw in the cast. You know that I that I've seen perform on the stage here in the yeah. Quad Cities. Um, you know Tom Wall, Jasper, and yeah. Mike well, Kennedy, one of our people, <laughs> Don Hazen. Uh, right. Yeah, I I, right. I, I, I just it? found out he yeah, yeah. He, he's the newest uh, uh, on air personality here at WQD. Yeah. He does uh, the Malt Shop show. I yeah. think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Katie, yeah, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. He plays older music than I play, which is. <laughs> Okay, but uh, on Tuesday night, so uh, cool. yeah, I, you know, I just found that out. Uh, you know, wow, oh, well, this is cool. And then Katie told me, well, he's in that movie that you're in. Oh, well. <laughs> but I think he got to talk. He didn't get to no. talk. Oh, okay. that was that was the first scene we shot. Uh, we shot it at uh, Augustana College. In it, it was called House on their House on the Hill, mm -hmm. an old um, lumber baron mansion, and. Uh, yeah, we were all pretty nervous during that because our our director of photography was there for the first time. Our, we had a guy handling our sound. He was there for the first time, and we were all just trying to figure out how to do what. <laughs> That's why we planned it, though, for that scene because mm -hmm. we thought it's... Yes. It's smaller and um, only a few people are talking, so we four, figure out Mike plays right. one, one person talking and three guys sitting. So yeah, yeah, yeah that can, works out. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can yeah. kind of work up I, to. I've swung booms in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, work yeah. our way up to having fifty yes. or six, sixty people on yeah. set, which for us, when we're used to working by ourselves, yeah. <laughs> can be a little. All of a sudden, yeah, daunting. you've got to. And we had, I mean, our director of photography, Kevin Railsback, has he's a nature photographer and cinematographer i mean he's done amazing work for national geographic and whatnot so he was fabulous to have <laughs> so, on board. so how much film did you jump with where he's here and all of a sudden you get a bug chronicle <laughs> <laughs> what did you say once in a while we have that kind of footage when we were shooting outside you know well kevin hadn't worked with with people very much and was very nervous about it and i said kevin just think of them as antelope just aim the camera at them they're just antelope and I think Alfred Hitchcock said that actors were cattle. So yeah. I, that's a little. <laughs> so sometime you know, in the middle cross, of it, he said, "One of you chase the other one across the yard." That, 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 for me. that crosses a line, but I think yeah, ant okay, okay. antelope. Yeah, you know, there we go. <laughs> is, right. is fine. So. Yep. Uh, um, so another thing that that multiple sets you guys filmed mm -hmm. all over the place, not only historical places here in the area, but you actually went back and filmed to an extent where it actually happened. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We were able to travel back to Cincinnati uh, with uh, Janos and um, Tom Taylor and Jess Taylor, and do some some kind of vignettes, is what I would call them, in the house where the where they actually lived and where these events took place. So this was once a seminary that had a number of uh, buildings, and the only remaining building, after all these years, is this is this house where the the Beechers lived. Uh, it's been completely devoured, you know, by an urban uh, setting. So it's, uh, but it's a very unique and a very beautiful. Uh, so you're not getting a lot of outside thing. shots. Well, you did get some. Oh, okay. Some. You know, you get some. That, that's probably got to be really careful, you know, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, that's right. Here's yes. the power line, or you know. Oh or yeah, we the, had that. Yeah. Well, we had that everywhere, and also uh, Chris Ryder, who, who's working with us, uh, doing some special effects kinds of things. He's removing some of those things, so mm -hmm. we did frame most of them out. But once in a while, there was a little evidence of yeah, he is, he the was, modern world that we had yeah. to remove. The, the hose, he did, and he did a great job. The hose job bib too. on the side of the house. Or, yeah, yeah. That, that, that weird yeah. Transformers. It's yeah. The, oh, true, yeah. It's yep. the Harriet Beecher Stowe House in Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh. They've been wonderful to work with. They're kind yeah. of organizing our uh, Cincinnati like premiere. premiere. Yeah. Yep. So when you're working in that setting, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to ask the actors, but I can also ask you, it's got to just kind of raise the level of what you're doing or how you're feeling of what you're making because you're, you know, they're speaking the words to an extent that was actually spoken, but you're standing there, what's going, you know, what actually happened. So that's got to kind of, ooh, I mean, I'm getting the, the, yeah. the goosey yeah. pimples just kind of thinking about it myself. It, like, it, wow, that's got to be really. Well, they're standing there in these wonderful costumes by Emily Boucher. <laughs> no, plug everybody. Just, by the time it's done, you should have mentioned everyone at least once. Just yes. keep plugging well, them Well, they people. did such awesome work, and I just 
I like to shine a light on those people. But, I, got, um, I got two pictures at home in two yeah. different outfits, man. Yes. They, they hang on my eight by tens. They Do hang. they? Oh, that that's absolutely, cool. man. That is oh, cool. That's cool. That's just, that's just cool. Yeah. But once you, you know, they're in their costumes and they're standing in the actual place where this history has taken place. And I know that that meant something to them, you know, as they're performing. And uh, for us, and and even the people at the at the house, you know, it was a magical magical day. Well, yeah, I can imagine the people that work there. They may have have yes. reenactors here or there for some kind of things, but um, they, but they've probably never had. Yeah. Here, we're going to do this. There was a little girl who came in, and she was waiting and waiting and waiting because she wanted to meet Harriet Beecher Stowe. How cool is that? She wanted to meet her. She knew she was there, and uh, we showed up, I think. Uh, we were getting ready to say goodbyes or something, and she posed with Jess because, oh. you know, she would waited we, all that time. And we, we, had could, some, yeah. we had some 8 by 10s with us of Jess in costume and as Harriet, and so... She, she signed just it. signed one for her, and yeah. Oh, that's that. <laughs> but it was a beautiful little moment. I mean, that's yeah. the reason you. Well, but it's also good. Things. I mean, I don't know how old the girl was, but she knew. She's a little girl. She but, was probably six or seven. Yeah. But I'm, I guess from the area, her mom and dad worked there. But she knew who Harriet Beecher Stowe was. Yes. Yep. To an extent. I if mean, they were there touring. The they house, were there touring, oh, okay. and she wanted yep. to meet her. And uh, I mean, that. That's like a Disney that's princess. That's what you want. You want those young people <laughs> oh, to learn about these important stories. So that was a, an awesome moment, one I'll never forget. So yeah. what were some of the other sets? I mean, I, 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 the one we did, oh when I was one, the one night it was up in Sterling. Yes. Um, really cool. It turned out the people that ran the house I knew from my job as racing, they, they managed a race team. Really? We were yes. talking when everybody yes. was sitting around. The, right. the, the, oh, the lady that was Linda there. Oh, Heckler. Yeah, yeah yes. Heckler, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, is she wonderful. Uh, well, she was fantastic. They, they sponsor a funny car called the Heckler. So when I was <laughs> announced her, as a, we got to talk, and I'm like, well, and then she brought her husband over. Hey, this is the guy that announced her. <laughs> right. so, That's awesome. It was, yeah, yeah, that, that bacon thing that's yeah, six degrees man yeah, exactly. all rolls around. so i knew it was there and then uh uh the when you locally filmed the the he wasn't there but the frederick douglas speech right yes at was the carpellis okay uh, museum yeah. yeah so i mean how many different sets did you end up or places did you film at well we filmed um the dylan home where you were that evening for um that's a cool film. place yeah mm -hmm. it's a beautiful beautiful estate and that uh was kind of standing in as our um as the beecher home at Lane Seminary, so it's fantastic inside, just yeah. beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful. And outside it was wonderful. The only thing that was not wonderful was the uh, Lincoln Highway goes right through there. Yes. So yeah. you've got a lot of traffic. You've a got lot a lot. Noise. You've got trains. And the train got, on the other side of the house. And I don't think anybody has a muffler in that town, do they? It's true, <laughs> um, but but no offense. Yes. Um, but the, it did seem odd. Uh, perhaps they were all from out of town, but uh, clearly there's a problem with uh, exhaust systems. <laughs> it was very noisy, know. so we had to do a lot of ADR work and replace you know yeah, audio yeah. with our actors. But that was a beautiful place. We shot at the Carpellis Museum uh, in Rock Island. Yeah, that, That's where that, you were. That was really cool. You're sitting place. right up there with the leads. Yeah, look at so, that. Yeah. No, but it, it, was, it was just, I, I walked around the place and just, yeah. you know, while I was there. It was just so cool. Some of the display. I'd, I'd never been there. Yeah. So it was just a, man, it's like, oh, God, there's all these places. It was a, I need to it's learn. a beautiful place and they were so wonderful to let us come in and film there. And uh, what's going to be fun for you is <laughs> when you were there, you know, when we had all of our extras there, and our leads there and we were filming that historic scene with frederick douglas of course fred like frederick douglas was not there that no no day. there was someone i don't know if you there's someone standing up above us <laughs> waving their hand everybody look here look here you know yes. so you see right. yes. your point of vision which makes so now sense. you're going to find it interesting to see that all <laughs> edited together with him addressing this yeah, crowd uh, I, I, he, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm it's just, gonna be fun yeah i'm, I'm so excited about that and we shot going. at the jenny lind chapel in Andover, Illinois. Now, that's where, you know, a lot of the church scenes are taking yeah, the place. The, the debates, the debates mm -hmm. uh, yeah. were there. Oh, okay, you had them in there. So yeah. that, that stood in for uh, the chapel that would have been on the Lane Seminary grounds. Mm -hmm. So those historic structures were 18, mid-1850s, roughly, let's say, and uh, the chapel, I think, was 1850. Um, so that's a little newer um, than our story by 15 years or so but yeah. that, that was as close as we could come here and um 
the Beecher House in, in Cincinnati is, is much like the Dillon House in that it was originally a brick house and was painted white and so on. So the two, will you'll see them kind of interchangeably in the film. And, and, and yeah, and it won't. Mm-hmm. They, they, it's a pretty good match. So when, 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 you, when you started working on the project, did you, I mean, your research told you that that house in Cincinnati still existed or, and then how do you, I mean, how do you approach someone and say, hey, we're making a movie. Can we use this historic house, shut down and, and, and allow us to go in? I mean, how yeah, do you I mean, approach that? I, I think what, it, what happened initially was that we, we wanted, we found out that it still existed and, and then we, we made a trip there and had made this arrangement ahead of time uh, and wanted to do some, just some preliminary shooting of the house itself that we thought we might use to uh, put together a kind of a demo reel of what we wanted to do, which, which is what ended up happening with that footage. And uh, they were installing um, an, a new exhibit or something, and so we kind of did a trade. We did shot this material and then um, shot some of our own material. Uh, but that was fairly early on in the process, so that's been several years ago now. Um, hey, I'm, I'm terrible. Sure. When, when did you first start? I guess I, I, I guess not not thinking about it, but yeah, I mean, when, when you finally said, "Okay, now we're going to do this," and you know, whatever your first move was, besides wiping your head and saying, "Are we really <laughs> are we really going to try this?" I think it was about ten years ago when Kelly, when we sat down and started. Um, uh, working on the screenplay. I think it was about 10. Yeah, we met with the, maybe met the with Hollies them. and talked to them about it, and then we created and, and, the and, script. And so in between that time, you've done... Oh, so oh yeah. Four or five? Good heavens, several. Yeah, yeah, yeah like probably that. about four or five And you films. used to always kind of go back to yes. that. Yes, yes. Knowing, we knowing have, someday it was going to... Yes, because yeah. you have to raise funding. Right. Yeah, you know? And we have usually several things going on because uh, funding doesn't always come when you want it sure. to, and you kind of have to ride the horse that's running. <laughs> and so uh, for a while, you know, we struggled with, uh, with that, raising the funds, finally raising enough to do the production part. Mm-hmm. And then we did um, the production over about a six-month period. Well, more like eight eight months okay mm-hmm. it, it just worked out that way with everybody most people worked other jobs and so it was sure. always a weekend and uh just having to grab uh scenes here and there and we really shot at a very very brisk pace much <laughs> much more brisk than than what would be done in hollywood because they uh, the things that we shot th- three scenes in a day you know they'd be spending multiple days per scene uh maybe a week even on a one one scene so yeah. we didn't have that luxury that that would have been nice some in some cases, of course. But, um, yeah, I guess we just seek things that have a lot of pressure and, uh, <laughs> and pain. So, uh, so, 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 so your total film time was like six months, eight months? Is that what you... I, uh, yeah. Production was probably eight months, but then, you know, we go and we do pickup shooting oh, yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you have to fill in, oh, we're missing this and we need to do this. So I would say it would end up being about a product, about a year of production total, I think, when we get done. And then, uh, you know, of course, you have development that you go through. You're meeting with people. You're talking with them and, and, you know, trying to get them excited about the project, too. And uh, so there's and then there's all this research and auditions and everything. It's just a long process. And the biggest (laughs) thing is trying to raise the funding. Yeah. You know, and that's what took a long time because. I think we shot, it was five years ago when we, yep. f- when we Finished. wrapped on our production. And uh, what did that mean? Nothing. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Baseball score. I'm sorry. Well, you're multitasking. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my MLB map, and I forgot to shut it off because it, it, we're into the preseason, folks. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's still, well, you have your priorities it's straight baseball. anyway. <laughs> Isn't it still basketball season? Hey, 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 yeah, hey, hey, it's baseball. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It never ends. We're playing preseason. Okay. 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 So I, I do apologize. Yeah, but no, yeah, that's okay. It was a baseball notification. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, I have to have my priorities. You know, probably threw everything off. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, it was five years ago when we did mm-hmm. when we wrapped up on production, and then of course we had to finish a lot of other projects and uh, continue with our fundraising to raise the money for post production editing. That came in last year. We got a wonderful grant from the uh, Quad City Arts, um, which allowed us to get. ADR work done with our with our uh, actors, and we received another grant from the Illinois Arts Council, which also helped with sound work. So, 
had to plug them and yep. say thank you. Absolutely. Right. No, thank you, you, thank you. Plug, you plug everybody. Yes. Right. So um, you guys editing? Mm -hmm. You do all your own editing? He's a wonderful editor. Okay. <laughs> well, I, was just, I mean, I mean, do you both sit in the editing bay, or or, or, or you do a rough, and she comes in, or you say, yeah, do you I, go do this, and I'll just keep doing? I have to rough it out first. Otherwise, we just we don't get anywhere. So <laughs> I, do, I do a draft, and then we look at it, and um, sometimes we do some real-time tweaking. So as we're going through it, Tammy will say, well, what about this or that, and we'll make adjustments. Um, we, you know... Typically, Tammy's wearing the producer hat, uh, and I'm wearing the director hat, and we both write. Um, but there's a lot of fluidity to that, <laughs> and and we collaborate on every on every every process yeah. element of the process. Yeah, right. And this project, you know, it's 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 been probably one of the most challenging projects for us. Which, which I, I mean, probably because your of biggest. the time, yes, because of all of the people that we've had to work with. And uh, we've met a lot of wonderful people. It's been very challenging, and I think it's going to be, you know, really magical. If you think about it being a, it's really um, a film that is made for broadcast. But I know that it's going to end up, you know, we'll probably have some film festivals, and and, uh, and I know and there are already screenings, people, yeah, calling for screenings, and. And you gotta like—I mean, you gotta like that when, when we you know, do. When, when you didn't have to in the early days when you had to go out and hustle your project or, yeah. or your, you know, you gotta hustle it to them. Yeah. When people are calling you and saying we'd like yours, right. you know, right. it's gotta be, <clears throat> excuse me, gotta be a good feeling and let you know, okay, now we've, yeah. now we've reached. So, so now you're doing the uh, the uh, uh, series, <clears throat> and that and that's through the, the I'm sorry, the uh, uh, Hero Street. Yeah, you're gonna yes. Hero, so what else is? On the plate. Well, I'm going to say that all of these projects are possible because of our fiscal sponsor, the Moline Foundation. Um, Outstanding. Because of them, you know, we're able to work, move forward on these projects. But our next one is going to be, we're going to be releasing Movie Star, The Secret Lives of Gene Seberg on DVD this summer Good with now. our partner, Gary McGee. So that's been a long, another long one. So on some of your other, like your older stuff, mm -hmm. can people still, I mean, is it available on DVD and you oh, go yeah. to your webpage yep. and they can, and yep. they can find it? Amazon.com. Oh, it's on Amazon. Can, okay. Yeah, okay. you can get and, it there. And fourthwallfilms.com. Mm -hmm. And then each of our projects has their own um, website. So the movie we've been talking about, Sons and Daughters of Thunder, is lanerebelsmovie.com. Right. Um, but we, you know, we start uh, building an audience as soon as we begin working on a project. So mm -hmm. we try to make people aware of it uh, all the way through so that when it's finished, we have uh, an audience kind of ready to go. <coughs> Someone waiting to see it. And, yes. And, and yeah. wanting to see right. it. No, yeah. That, that's, yeah. Yep. that's outstanding. So the premiere is in two weeks. Yes. Two weeks from today, as a matter of fact. It is uh, the 16th. <sighs> right. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm breaking out in perspiration. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's scaring me a little. Okay. So, all the other stuff I talk about, oh, that was easy. That Do was we easy. have to talk about that? Okay. Now we're gonna have a premiere. <laughs> oh man, can I? Don't I have something to edit? Yes. The, the producer handles that. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, so it's, it's coming up in two weeks, mm -hmm. and then uh, your Cincinnati one is the week after that. So, right. So, Correct. You've got two. Okay. So, yes. so let's really shock you. Yes. Um, it's at the Putnam Theater. Theater. Yeah. Are there, or Putnam Museum Theater? Yes. Uh, the giant screen, yes. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's on the big screen yeah. at the Putnam. That's yeah. important. Tickets are still available. Yeah, they're going fast. They, so people were recommending advance tickets. Yeah, I, 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 everybody I talked to said, you know, y man, you guys want to go see it, go get tickets. And, and so they're available at putnam.com, or I'm talking dot org. Dot org, yes. Dot org, or are they available on the Lane? site also they're, they're not they got the link putnam. you the can link. find the oh, link, link there okay uh, it's okay. a little tricky right now uh on well, the putnam it, it was a little for me to, to, to kind of surf dot, through it it's putnam.org slash, slash calendar yes right that'll yeah. take you to the page. Or, or if you're on the main menu go to the calendar page okay yeah. you'll so find keep it that there. in mind yeah because when i started uh, surfing it was like i went there and it was like there's no ad for it right so you want to go hell? to the movie page right <laughs> yeah so i so but yeah I, I did and it wasn't there it'll, yeah. oh so then i had to go back and, it'll migrate right. there i think and so i just started uh, dropping yeah. down till okay yeah, there then, it is yeah. yes yes well the first show is close to being sold out mm -hmm. um 
and that's just based on word of mouth and Facebook so far. Uh, All the people that were in your other ones that are coming to yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there were a lot, a lot of people involved, so um, that that has helped, I think, with the with the, building the audience mm -hmm. this early. Mm -hmm. But typically, our 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 first show does sell out before the event, anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're, it looks like we're on track to do that. And if that happens, then the Putnam will add a second show. But on Sunday. Um, right now, Oh, on don't. Sunday. Okay. I mean, it won't be like after the Cincinnati, it'll come back. No, it'll be a, okay. the day on Sunday. If it sells right. out, they would open up the uh, another one, I think, around 3 oh, that, on Sunday. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. So, like you said, you know, uh, after the premieres, then you're hoping to take it around to festivals, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So, I mean, is the eventuality for it to be on PBS or just to just buy it as a DVD for people living? Uh, oh, no. it'll, it'll be all those things. And uh, locally, we always broadcast on WQPT. Um, on QPT, yeah. Um, we premiere on there, that, yes. That's uh, because we love working with them, of course, and that's our home audience. But also, uh, we do enter our work in the Emmy competition, and so th there are rules about wh when it broadcasts well, uh, yeah, and where yeah, and yeah, different yeah. things. No, yeah, so we, we would expect some other broadcasts uh, as well. And um, because it's a narrative film and we're used to distributing documentaries, the market is a little different. And so... We don't have a clear uh, marketing uh, <laughs> strategy. We we know we can. Oh, do this the, is one of those throw the dart <laughs> thing. Okay. <laughs> Dice were involved. That's Dice. All, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and, all I'm going to say. And it was Horvath. It's one of those goofy shaped <laughs> dice because he plays those games. So you said you know him from school. High school. He was actually best man at my wedding. And what oh high school gosh. was that? United Township. Awesome. My yeah. hi, my high school. Yes. Was UT, really? Yes. And you're from Waterloo, mm -hmm. and one of my very best friends who I worked with for years and years grew up and went to Waterloo. It's the Gardner family. Oh. I don't know if you're familiar, but yeah. She's a Wahawk. I thought everybody knew those. She's <laughs> a Wahawk. We don't even know what a Wahawk is. No. Because West, we come from... West High School. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. we, we were Panthers. I'm a Panther. Yeah. yeah. We were clear. Wahawks. I'm a, I'm a Panther. We, we don't know Absolutely. what a Wahawk is. Really? You went to UT? I did. Outstanding, yeah. yeah. Well, that, well, probably when both campuses were open. Oh, yes, I started at North Campus. Yep, me too. I yep. was at North and, and South, and yep, 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 from the old school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Climbed them stairs a whole bunch of times coming back from lunch. I hear you. <laughs> oh, now we're going to get into war stories about the, the, the whole, the little places at UT. Yeah, oh, those are scary times. <laughs> well, um, so, yeah, in, in, in two weeks is the show. You can still get tickets, like I said, Putnam.org. Go to Putnam.org calendar. And uh, I can't thank you guys enough. This was just, oh. wow. wow. My pleasure. Out thank you. This was just totally outstanding. Um, I'm looking forward to the premiere only because, well, I'm in it. <laughs> We're yeah. looking forward to seeing yeah, you, too. You know, you know. That's true. I, I've already picked out someone to be, what do they call those, uh, seat savers? I'll have someone sitting in the audience for oh, me. Oh, wow. I'll say, yeah, so. yeah, I'll, I'm, 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 I'm going to do it upright, you know. Good. We've never had one of those. Yeah, well, you know, I, I figure it's my only time. i got to make sure saver. I do it yeah. right. Wow. Uh, all right, well, we're going to play a couple quick commercials again. Thank you guys so much. Uh, go to Putnam.org slash calendar. Get your tickets. Educate yourself, boys and girls. Um, you're going to see people that you know. You're going to be told a great, great story. And uh, that's the most important when you're watching documentary is someone tells you a good story. And this one is. This one really is. All right. So we're going to play a little bit of commercials real quick. And then uh, we'll be back coming up here in just a little while. we got uh, the old hippie show right here on WQUD. This is old Uncle Ted. Join me.